up guys it's Ifeola welcome back to my channel I'm really excited about today's video I feel like I say that every single time but I am going to be doing a review for you guys and you guys know that I'm all about reviews <laughs> about three months ago on this channel I did my very first stove unboxing and I've noticed that it's been getting a lot more traction recently I thought that I would come up on here and do a three month review for you guys tell you a little bit about what I've been using my cacotte for, how I've been taking care of it, how I've been storing it, all that sorts of stuff. And also I wanted to share with you guys an unboxing of another stove item that I picked up recently. So if you like the sounds of all that, then please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel, guys. Click that like button down below, leave me a comment, share this video with all your fellow stove lovers. And yeah, let's just get right into the video. So I have my trusty cacotte back there. You guys already know what the situation is in regards to the sizing, the color, all that stuff. I love this thing. I pretty much use my cacotte to cook everything. I've baked bread with it. I've braised lamb chops in it. I've done so many dishes that I cook on the stove and then finish off in the oven. It's honestly probably easily actually the most versatile piece of cookware that I have in my collection and I've just really been impressed with it like when I tell you guys the lamb chops that I make in that stove fall off the bone my husband was someone that was really skeptical about me spending that much on a pot I actually didn't tell him until after but anyway but now he's all for it like he actually sees the difference and that was one of the reasons why I decided to go with the stove over a Le Creuset um, cacotte simply because of the braising technology that's on the stove. Making meat in it is just a dream. I only made bread in it my cacotte once but that's because I don't really bake bread to be honest but even at that like it just finishes off things in the oven so lovely and one thing I really love about it is because of how beautiful it is you can pretty much just serve it from oven to the table. So I'm really, really impressed with it. Full transparency as far as cons go, it is super heavy. Like that is one thing that I definitely underestimated even during my unboxing. You guys would have heard me say, this is heavy, this is heavy. It's really heavy. That's something to bear in mind. I believe the model I have is about 10 kilos and um, that's not light, obviously. It's also pretty big, so you have to make sure that you have the room to store it. When I eventually get another one, which I think I might be getting relatively soon, it's just not possible to store it in the way, you know you can store traditional pots where you put one pot inside of a pot and then just put the lid separately. You can't really store the cacottes in the same way, so it's really important to bear in mind that you have the space for it. I know that sounds really obvious, but when you live in a small apartment like I do, storage space is really valuable. I can't afford to just leave it out on my counter all the time, even though that would be lovely. <laughs> but yeah, it is something to bear in mind. But beyond the size and the weight of it, it's 100% worth it. I think it's so versatile. If you guys watched my um, Hello Fresh review, you would see that I pretty much cook every single thing in this cacotte. So you could shallow fry and deep fry things in it. You could make stews, curries, whatever. You could pretty much make anything in this one pot. The only reason why I'm considering buying a smaller one is because it's such a huge size but again that's not a necessity i could definitely cook smaller portions in the size that i have i pretty much think i'm just trying to justify needing another one which i really don't so let me show you guys what it looks like now after pretty much daily use for the past three months so i'm probably going to do some close-ups so you can see properly but this is pretty much what it looks like it's still amazing it's still in really good condition i'm going to show you guys the bottom of it it pretty much looks brand new from the outside from my perspective i'll tell you guys how i take care of everything because i think that's also contributing to it where you could possibly see a little bit of difference if anywhere would be on the inside of the pot i'm going to do close-ups i think that makes more sense and you can possibly see that it looks a little shinier <laughs> and that's because there's oil in it so um, one thing I wanted to talk about is how I have been storing my pots so I kept these little plastic 
knob things. I think I told you guys I was gonna do that in my unboxing video. Basically, when you store the pot, you should store it with the lid on top. If the lid is in direct contact with the base, over time, the metal rubbing against each other can cause friction and that can lead to rusting and a bunch of things that we definitely do not want. So I've been using these little plastic things to create that barrier between and I, I've just been doing it because I someone said that you should and it kind of made sense to me. So that's what I've been doing. And I just store this in a cupboard and it's fine. I'm gonna get more into how I care for my stove cookware towards the end of this video, but I wanted to specifically mention this because that's something that would be unique to a piece that comes with a lid. All right, so now I'm gonna tell you guys about the second stove cookware piece I decided to pick up. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know, but I decided to pick up a frying pan. So I actually filmed a little bit of an unboxing. <laughs> Okay, so that is my new stove piece. I got the 26 centimeters frying pan and I bought it on Amazon. So I had been studying this particular piece for a really long time. I think it retails for about 130 pounds, but Amazon prices go up and down, you guys already know. And at one point it was about 25% off or something like that on Amazon. So I was able to pick it up for 90 pounds. So that was a really great price. Ever since then though, I have seen it for about five pounds cheaper. So if you're here in the UK, definitely wait for it to go on sale. I've also seen it for around similar prices on Wayfair. So grab yourself a deal, guys. This is what it's looking like. Again, it also has some oil in it. So let me tell you guys about my thought process to this. So stove actually does a frying pan without a handle and deciding whether to buy that version or this version was something that honestly I deliberated over about for way too long. I ended up messaging one of my friends that is a fellow enameled cast iron snob but she prefers Le Creuset and we decided that this would be the better one to go for just because it might be easier to have something to grip while you're cooking. I also liked that the stove frying pan had these lips on the side, which has actually turned out to be really useful for if you're like pouring out sauces. Again, stove pieces are just incredible qualities. It's really heavy, but not as heavy as the cocotte, obviously. I've used this to fry eggs. I've used this to fry plantain. I've used this to make skillet cornbread, actually. Khalees has an amazing ginger cornbread recipe in her cookbook and I tried that out with this and it came out amazing. So this is something that I just feel like again is super versatile. You can cook things in the oven with this, on the stove with on the stove with this and honestly I'm just so in love with it. One thing I have noticed though, it's really hard to get a steady temperature in cast iron. Once the cast iron's heated up, it retains the heat more than a normal cheap pan that I have anyway. Wood, so it's almost kind of like it burns everything, but then if it's too cool, everything soaks up the oil. So kind of trying to find what the sweet spot is with temperature is a bit tricky, especially because I don't fry things very often. So I'm not really used to it. I was having that issue with my eggs. And now I feel like I've kind of understood the oil to heat ratio for me to not keep burning my eggs or pancakes but I don't fry meat or um, plantain that often for me to figure it out. It's really annoying, but I know that it's something I'm doing wrong and that there's a way for the cookware to do it right. So really it, there is a little bit of a learning curve with that, but for the most part, it's just like traditional cookware. You guys would probably already know you're not supposed to use abrasive sponges on them. You're not supposed to use metal utensils on them. So you kind of have to make sure that you protect the surface, but they're not non-stick pans in the same way that like traditional Teflon 
pants are non-stick. Things will still stick to them. So in the very beginning, I would spend so much time using a really gentle sponge to try to brush off whatever was stuck onto them, or I would soak the pants overnight. And I mean, that's all well and good. But then I decided to try the baking soda trick. I am still really upset that I didn't film the time my cocotte was burned, like it actually had burned food on it. And the baking soda trick just lifted the burns off so easily. All you need to do is put a little bit of water in your pan, put maybe half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of baking soda, leave it to boil for a few minutes. And then you'll notice that all the burn food particles on your pan will just come off really easily. Here I'm just using a wooden spatula. And then with the sponge, I just wipe everything down and everything comes off really easily. I'll go over the entire pan with some soapy water. You can use soap on enamel cast iron. And just dry everything down immediately. And here I'm taking a drop of rapeseed oil and just is using that to coat the inside of the pan and that just keeps it protected. Another thing that I've gotten from videos as well, when you're moving your stove from let's say one hob to another or from the hob to the counter, don't drag it across, like lift it up and carry it and place it down because that can also discolor the bottom as well. But honestly, it's been a much easier transition than I thought. That is pretty much all I wanted to tell you guys in this video. I am a huge advocate for stove cookware as you can already tell. I'm still really curious about trying a Le Creuset cocotte or something from the Le Creuset range because I know that they're pretty much on par with stove. I really love the industrial look of stove though. I kind of gravitate more towards that aesthetic. But whatever I do decide to do, I will definitely come up on here and let you guys know. I'm kind of leaning towards staying with stove so I can just have my little three piece collection and I think I will be good with that for now. That's enough rambling for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Please make sure you share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next Sunday at 6 p.m. Stay blessed, stay safe and take care. Bye.